What is time? A deceptively simple question that has not yet been given a proper answer. In physics, time is operationally defined as what a clock reads. This operational definition of time, wherein one says that observing a certain number of repetitions of a standard cyclical event constitute one standard unit, such as the second, is useful in the conduct of both advanced experiments and everyday affairs of life. This classical way of looking at time portrays time as a non-tangible human construct that to keep track of events, conduct experiments, and aid day-to-day -day interactions. Everything was fine and everyone was going about their business until Einstein came along about a century ago with a new definition of time that now makes our heads swell. And now we are more confused than ever. In special relativity, time, which was once a well-defined and working absolute concept, was taken to be relative and depends on who is measuring it. It got worse when he published his general theory of relativity paper. He took time, which was just an abstract concept or idea like numbers, and turned it into a physical thing incorporated into what he called space-time. So now, time, according to general relativity, can be considered a physical thing, just like mass, charge, and sp This is just like saying that numbers, which are abstract things invented for keeping records and for easy communication and experimentation, just like time, suddenly becomes a real physical thing. In this video, I will be analyzing the concept of time and hope that by the end, we will be able to agree on a clearer and more useful definition of it. Let us consider a system that is made up of a small machine that pushes marbles across a smooth surface into a malleable sheet suspended above a sharp object. The bottom of the sharp object is a collector that collects the falling marbles and passes them onto the small machine that again pushes them onto the surface. Let's put this system in isolation so that no marble is added or subtracted from the system. When the machine pushes a marble into the malleable sheet, the sheet curves in proportion. As more marbles enter the sheet, it keeps curving until at some point it touches the sharp object which then pops the sheet and the collected marbles drop into the collection beneath the sharp object. When the sheet touches the sharp object and releases the marbles, it flattens itself again, ready for more collection. By looking at the curvature of the sheet, one can tell how many marbles have been collected and can assign numbers to designate the curvature and call it time. Therefore, by simply looking at the sheet, we can tell how much time has passed. Let these marbles represent the materials that make up an animal, say a cat. When the sheet is flat, this represents zero years for the cat, and when the sheet pops, it represents the natural death of the cat. We can calibrate this system to give us readings of the age of the animal. Let's go a little past this point. As the marbles build up, the cat gets older until it dies. So, we have witnessed time pass from one year, two years, three years, and so on for the cut. And this is time flowing in the forward direction. Now, now when the cut dies, the sheet flattens again, meaning that time goes back to zero. The same marbles that made up the cut start recollecting again to form another cut of age 1, 2, 3, and so on. Note that this is definitely the same cut. What we have just witnessed is time flowing in reverse. If you leave this system and come back after a while, you won't be able to tell how much time has passed because matter and energy are conserved here. This tells you that you can only use time to tell you the series in which events occur. This whole discussion has been very abstract. Let's now use real examples. Let us use a galaxy to clarify this. 
Note that this will work the same for any other kind of system. Let's take a galaxy made up of say 100,000 stars. The number of stars doesn't really matter. What is important is that the galaxy has a specific mass and matter content. We know that chemical reactions occur within every star to produce light. When the fuel in the star is exhausted, the gravitational pull within the star overcomes the outward pressure that used to be produced by the chemical reaction within the star, and so the star explodes, scattering its material to the surrounding. Gravity then recollects these particles to form new stars, with total mass being the same. By looking at the changes in the stars, we can assign age to them, like we did in the earlier example. That is why you can hear astronomers saying things like the solar system is 4.5 billion years old. Note that the reactions in the stars are a series of events that occur until the star dies. And when new stars are formed, the same series of events start all over again. So the age given to a star is simply just describing this series of events in the forward direction, the forward flow of time. These events clearly can be reversed and by the same argument will represent the backward flow of time. This is a never-ending cycle. Therefore, whenever you look at that galaxy, it will look exactly the same. This means you cannot assign a one-direction time to it, which also therefore means the galaxy and hence the universe is infinite. This unequivocally tells you that without matter, the word time is meaningless. This also tells you that, like numbers, time is an abstract idea necessary for the keeping of records and making meaningful discussions. By this reasoning, how can we define time? Time can be defined as an idea used in keeping track of the series in which events happen. This tells you that time can flow both forward and backward, and that time is non-tangible. If you disagree with this definition, I will be happy to hear yours. Please drop it down in the comment section below. What I do in this channel is provide intensive analysis of physics theories, especially for those that don't add up, to help you decide for yourself the validity of these theories. If you feel like this is something you want to hear more about, then please subscribe. And to help this video reach other people, please click on that like button. Even before the results of the James Webb telescope, I always knew the Big Bang Theory was garbage. Nevertheless, even the Big Bang Theory uses the concept of time as I have described. The parameter used here is expansion, in contrast to the stretching of, of my malleable sheet. It tells you that time starts when matter appears. Even a grade 7 student can disprove the Big Bang. If all the universe was a singularity, what was outside that singularity? If you say nothing, I ask you how the universe can be expanding into nothing. If you say empty space, then I will tell you that, therefore, the singularity was not the beginning of the universe. Empty space was already there. And since empty space is part of the universe, then the Big Bang cannot be the beginning of the universe. It is that simple. In that case, it will mean that all matter was already in the universe, dying and recreating itself every time, as I described. So, the universe is infinite. It has no beginning and no end. You can make of these your own ideas about God. For those of you who believe in time travel, this video provides you with the knowledge of how to do it. Just find a way to pass away and you will be recycled back into a younger self, avoiding the time travel paradox. What does this tell you about time dilation and spatial relativity? Refer to my other videos, is time dilation real? 
and destroying spatial relativity to find out more. We shall be examining the concept of space and eventually the concept of space-time in the subsequent videos. So click on that subscribe button below to stick around and to get notified click on that notification bell. If you are interested in seeing how gravitational waves can arise from quantum mechanics which provides a new way of studying the cosmos, refer to the videos on gravitational and EM waves. If you wish to understand dark matter, then refer to this video. There are many other videos like these to explore, so feel free to navigate through this channel. Stick around and I will see you in the next video.